during all the holidays, I actually make uh, mashed potatoes, I, I, and that's like my, my thing. YOLO. YOLO. To say some like loud stuff. <clears throat> Figaro. Uh, rarely do I hear you, you know, shout. I feel like I, I'm more of the shouter. I'm the guy putting yeah. my, my face in the pillows, you know? Okay. <laughs> um, so, in WC10, I'm not sure if you, if you knew it, but they got uh, new courses, and they have, yeah, like updated co-driver mode, like something to do with the pace notes. I'm going to assume that the game's like just purely fucked. Um, <laughs> and it, it, let's explain to the people why we're not able to see your beautiful face. I don't have a webcam. <laughs> That'll do it. I'm poor. <laughs> poor with the 3080. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now you're poor. Yeah, um, I haven't been playing th this game specifically because uh, it's, it's just a mess. That's why. Force feedback's great, but... Mm. Yeah, I love the force feedback. Love the physics. The graphics are not good most of the time. Like, sometimes they're really convincing. Sometimes it's like, bam! Like, right in your face, like, that's like, that's how, how a rally game should look. And then other times it looks like hot garbage. It looks like a cartoon. <laughs> N64, it's coming back. Yeah, like, it does look kind of like N64-ish in some, some areas. Or like Dreamcast, maybe. But, but uh, yeah, I get what you're saying. It's like, yeah. once in a while, it's just like the variability of the driving terrain. It's just like, wow, this looks great. Yeah. And then you turn a corner and you look at a tree and you're like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like... Who designed that tree? They draw this by hand. In MS Paint. And yeah, the car models are, are total garbage too. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying total garbage because someone, someone did spend a lot of time put, doing this. But compared to other games in the rally genre that I've played, I'm disappointed by the car models. I'll say that. That's fair. Yeah. What was the first racing game that you've ever played? Probably Outrun back on the NES. Okay. I remember, uh, I remember playing like Contra and stuff all the time. But then, like we uh, somehow got outrun, and I was like, "Wow, how have I never seen this before?" Started playing it, and then, like my little kid brain was like, "Why doesn't this look like outside?" But <laughs> I had a lot of fun with it. When did you first indulge yourself in the world of sim racing, like like current day stuff? Um, probably more recently, uh, like two years ago with GT Sport. Okay. I, uh, I used to play like old school uh, PC racing games with my stepdad. It's oh. like the only way we really connected. <laughs> it's computer stuff. But like we'd play like NASCAR 2002 and 98 and, and whatnot. And he had got like a second wheel and everything so that we could play together. And uh, okay. that was like my introduction to it. But when I got into it myself, it was more like Gran Turismo Sport. Got a wheel and everything. And that's kind of why I got the CSL Elites, because I can play on PlayStation or I can play on PC. So as an active member of the Rally community, are you allowed to post content featuring other forms of racing on your channel? Uh, I think it's outside my contract, but I think <laughs> if I label it just right. <laughs> How important do you think VR is to sim racing? I think right now, not too many people care a lot about it, but I feel like if companies don't start including it as a main feature soon, they're not going to have sales. Hmm. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons WRC isn't as played by the community is probably because it doesn't feature VR. There's no way to, there's no way to play. Yeah. It's, it's the weirdest decision to be an officially licensed racing title at this point and not have VR. You can't pretend to be a racing simulator. I think at this point and not have VR implemented. It'd at least be nice to be like maybe like a future project. Like we're aiming for it. We just don't have it down yet or something. But that's the thing though. They, they do have it down and they've already demonstrated it with a WRC 6. You know, they, they have the engine yeah. working. I guarantee they can adapt that engine to whatever. They're probably using the same engine that, that WRC 6 was on, you know? Um, maybe. I actually don't know on that. But I yeah, mean, if it know. is the same engine, I don't know why they don't implement it. Yeah, it's almost like 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 some kind of conspiracy, like like they're like <laughs> like some anti VR company. Oh, Track IR is like paying them not to feature VR in their game. Hey, you know, <laughs> down on our toes. Yeah. What's your password and credit card information? 
One 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 one. <laughs> oh, you know what? I bet you I'm gonna have to turn my notes on. Uh, straight. It's alright. I'll start. <laughs> you know what? Let, let, this could be the interview process. Like you could just drive while I'm interviewing you. Sure. Th this will represent you. Um. Okay. Yeah. Let, let me. Uh. <laughs> this will define you as a person. <laughs> Let me, let me Don't get a, up. yeah. What gear did you start off with? Well, I mean, if you mean like back in the day, I think it was, it was a Logitech, like a G20, 23 or something. One of the okay. really old ones. It had like big red buttons and shit. <laughs> Do you remember it fondly or is it, was it something that you kind of like, where it's like, damn, I wish this was like, had, had something different about it. I mean, it worked all right. Um, something about the motor went out on both of them mm. after like a year and so <laughs> my stepdad actually took the uh the motor system out and just put bungee cords inside them <laughs> yeah <laughs> so hey that works no real feedback it was just linear strength yeah so what level sim racer are you would you say you're close to or at uh 9000 me probably like 3000 <laughs> <laughs> i like yamcha though i think he's a good character um do you think we're there in terms of like the available or the current available realism like in sim racing titles or you know what do you think is is missing in that there's always an argument over whether or not a certain game should be considered a sim hmm. <laughs> and for everybody it's a little bit different it seems okay maybe if we had a system to define what level of realism can, is considered sim worthy because i mean they're all games sure but like gran turismo isn't technically a sim yeah simcade maybe but it, it's not like full on sim. Yeah, it has like aspects of like simulation. The of the, yeah. of the physics. Okay. Having um, having like a system of identifying what's a sim, and then I kind of have to agree with something that one of your previous interviewees said is just having a, an overlaying body that can the sim racing give association people insight as to what what would be like an entry level product that is actually quality and worth buying up to like what the top level would be. Hmm software side of things you know i played uh, gran turismo sport for quite a bit uh when i first started my like actual getting into sim racing and i really like being able to hop in and out of races and i like that they have some kind of standard for people competing together but there's absolutely nobody actually watching the races yeah so if there's a wreck and you know that you're not at fault there's no way for you to really contest what happened that let alone in real time so you get penalized even though somebody else screwed up or is trying to screw you up. They have an online racing system that is geared toward actually competing for an actual prize. Yeah. If this were something that were happening in real motorsports, you know, <laughs> it'd just be, it'd be ridiculous. You'd get laughed out. There'd be no competition. You'd be, you'd be done. NASCAR yeah. doesn't exist that way. F1 doesn't exist that way. I feel like if they're going to have a competition where you're actually competing for a real prize in the real world, then they need to have people watching these competitions so that yeah. they can moderate in real time. So what you're saying is, if you're going to have a competizione, if things get too spicy in the sim racing world, what can we use to, to mild it down? Need some guacamole. <laughs> I mean, Gran Turismo is making some big steps for the sim racing community too, you know, like, uh, you know, we can't discount that. They have been a big player driving since. driving simulator. Yeah, yeah, they, <laughs> they're the only source for, for a real driving simulator. I never did play five or six. Yeah, I didn't play five or six either. I played a uh, prologue, which was kind of five, I think, I think. Uh, I played four, played three, two. One go! No, I didn't. I didn't say. Uh, I didn't play one actually, but I started off on two, and then I stopped at sport. Sport has that effect. <laughs> what game do you think right now best re represents sim racing? You know, like what's the biggest player? Probably ACC. Okay. They have a pretty good balance. I wish they had a bit more customizability, like AC, because I think the physics as an entry point are better. You you're talking but like I feel mods? Like AC is catching up. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I understand why they, they do that because if, if it's like a, a competizione, like they want it like really locked yeah. down so everyone has, you know, the same. Yeah. You can't drive anything but my Mazda Miata. <laughs> my Miata. What does your wife think about you sim racing and sim racing in general? Uh, well, she's not like super into it, but 
she doesn't mind that I race. Yeah. He doesn't bug her or anything, but she's not like sitting here watching me. <laughs> yeah. Like if I'm especially into something, I'll like, hey, come over, try this. <laughs> I got this fucking cool ass Miata. It's pink with green wheels and yellow man. headlights. Yeah. You're going to love it. It's your favorite color. <laughs> yeah. And your favorite car. Miatas are cool. I'm not talking to you about Miatas. Um, One of my cars was a, uh, was it a Ford Escort? I know someone in it's particular. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I, oh, I, I know someone specifically that would like to hear more about this, actually. What, what year? I didn't have a fancy one, but I had a, a Ford GT or a, a Ford Escort GT. It was like a, was it 94? It was a lot of fun. That thing handled like a like a potato <laughs> just yeah but it, i mean it handled you could handle it, was good it in a straight line was it yeah they were pretty quick it it uh used the the miata engine <laughs> and, that, 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 and that thing's and that, that thing's a powerhouse you know <laughs> <laughs> Zero to 30 in like five seconds. the instant torque and yeah had torque vectoring i don't know what that is but i'm assuming it had it yeah, lots of vectors. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what was your opinion on on uh, racing in general, like becoming more and more electrified? I think it's really cool. Um, like I've watched some Ken Block stuff. Of yeah, course it's it's fun to watch him drive anything. But in the, uh, um, the Mustang, the like I don't have a call problem that. with it. Yeah, I like the idea. I just I feel like it's going to be a while before we have like a big shift toward electric in the racing scene. I feel like people are attached to the whole Berber go. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. Yeah, I like it too. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be tough, I think, because people like us, our generation, were so ingrained in it. Yeah, I mean, w once we this die, I think it'll be less of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're shifting focus towards electric vehicles. How do you feel about future sim racing titles? kind of forced to replicate electric vehicles you know like does it do you feel like it's gonna be boring or well i mean i guess it depends on the physics of the car then i don't think i've driven any electrics in a sim at this point but they have capacity for a lot of torque so that can yeah. be fun yeah i guess the application like you know uh i, I see it being a lot of fun in, in rallycross specifically um i think it'll be weird to fire up a car in here Hang on, boys. We got a Tesla. Yeah, we got a Tesla around these parts, and I don't like that. I've never driven one in real life, and I've never been in the passenger seat. So yeah, like I haven't had that experience. But yeah, like uh, if a set of Corsa is any representation of what it actually is like to drive them, I'm not impressed. It's it's like a hollow kind of experience, you know. Um, well, kind of like I was saying, like when you when you hit the gas. You're not going to hear that engine. You're not going to have any exhaust notes. It's just going to be. Are I mean, are you even hitting the gas though at that point? Well, figuratively, when you hit the voltmeter. <laughs> yeah, the the uh, the potentiometer the regulator or the. <laughs> uh, it's probably not potentiometer based. It's probably. Do you think they use a Hall effect sensor on the throttle pedal? That's a good question. I'd hope so. I wouldn't want a damn potentiometer. You know, get <laughs> who built this thing? Fanatec. <laughs> yeah. Do you think uh, in our lifetime we will see the end of driving? Coming from somebody or as somebody who has driven vehicles, <laughs> <laughs> more than one even. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I hope not. Is that just the part of our brain that's just so used to it, it's so ingrained that it's important to us? Because I feel like if, if you were part of a younger generation, it wouldn't be that big of a deal to you. Because that, that would mean more time to be on your phone if you don't have to drive. Yeah. I mean, I see the aspects of it. I'm, I'm not saying that we shouldn't do it. You know, if NVIDIA and Intel and all them can get their algorithms straight and keep cars on the road and from breaking into other cars and other people, we got our network infrastructure updated so that we can actually have high transmission data, uh, data rates. Yeah. It could work, and it's probably safer. Yeah, but, I mean, I, know, I agree. As old fogies, I like driving. I enjoy it, but I mean, 
hunting used to be a major part of human experience and it's not anymore yeah it's it's more of like a so. like a niche thing yeah yeah you're right like we do we do progress you know and, and i do think that would be considered progression because as you just mentioned uh it would be safer if you took the human element out of uh transportation do you think vr will take place of transportation in the future yeah like there's no point in going out because you can go there with your tactile feedback suit i don't think so i mean even if we had almost life like vr i'd still want to go out and actually do things actually see the world and feel the rain feel air yeah i know exactly what you mean but again do you think that's more or less uh, because we grew up more with that i mean you'll probably get to see it with your daughter you like like you, you'll be able to see the differences now like uh in, in what people prioritize as you know with their free time you know uh yeah it is a different world i'll give you that i mean yeah we're, we're pretty much from the same generation yeah we didn't have cell phones let alone smartphones and yeah. laptops weren't really a thing they were around but they were like they were unobtainable <laughs> yeah they were unobtainium yeah. you can use like google maps to go pretty much anywhere and look at something yeah i mean and that that will progress that will advance to the point to where like you're there almost you know i mean but i mean it, it used to take me you can confirm this or not but it used to take me like five to ten minutes to load a single picture for porn yeah. <laughs> For like, uh, school projects. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On a 14 kilobyte per second connection. Yeah, and you couldn't even be sneaky about it. Like, you, uh, it was so loud. It was like, you know? I'd be like, I would put a blanket over that sometimes just so it would be like quieter and, and it didn't work, but you know. <laughs> yeah, things have progressed quite far in a short period of time. Yeah. And hey, uh, um, I saw recently somebody had actually developed a, PC 50. like a walking motion simulator kind of thing for VR systems. So yeah, who knows? I, I'm Maybe. really excited about that. <laughs> we get smell o vision going, which is advancing as well. Yeah. Um, we get some like basic misting and, and wind systems and you could be walking on Mars. <laughs> is smelling the, farted near you. Yeah. That's the, the first thing we, we prioritize <laughs> developing is like, the fart like it's yeah the scientist not, is like right? it's a basic <laughs> a basic human element a basic component of life you know and, we need it for it to yeah. feel authentic yeah <laughs> i mean there will come a point to where that is important like that like that's the last piece to, to replicating real life is to replicate the smell of a fart through digital means <laughs> you know with, with like Neuralink and stuff I, I think it'll be possible to just replicate smells just by basic electric signals being sent to parts of your brain you know um yeah so so i don't think I mean, it'll if we have like a matrix type thing that won't even matter just signal a receptor yeah you know how there's like bus simulators and truck simulators and whatnot yeah. do you think there's a gap in the <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you think there's a gap in the market for like uh you know uh, train simulators and uh Isn't and they're already <laughs> yeah i'm sure there is right <laughs> all right that, that wasn't a serious question and, and for anyone that that is like a train conductor or whatever like that's not making fun of your profession or your passion but i just think it's funny to because you just go, you, you just go like forward and backward. I'm gonna give you three choices, and we're gonna play that that horrible game, like where it's like shoot, kill, marry, or whatever. Uh, what is it? Okay. What sim racing game would you marry? What sim racing game would you kill? And what sim racing game would you uh, make love to only once? Take on a very intense date. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> a very intense penetrative date. I would fuck Gran Turismo Sport. Okay. Because <laughs> it's fun to jump in and out of, but man, I don't want to stick with it. Okay. Um, probably marry ACC, and uh, which one would I kill? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a horrible oh, game, no. but but you know, it's it's it really kind of brings the human element like uh, to a conversation. Like if you had to do this, you know, you had to get primitive, you know. If I had to get rid of a racing game, Forza. <laughs> Forza. <Honestly. laughs> 
And yeah, those games have have, I've played have their place. But. Four, five, six, seven, and I've played Horizon like three and four. And like they're fun. The Horizons are fun enough to jump in and play for a little bit. But the community, oh my god. Even in like the mainline games where they say like they're all about the racing, it's all about ramming people out of the way mm. and trying to keep them off of you while you cross the finish line. Do, is Forza considered a sim racing game? Not really sim, I probably wouldn't say. I'm just saying, like, Forza can go. <laughs> You're like, okay, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Forza, Forza can go. <laughs> Forza used to be one of those games that, that was uh, Gran Turismo's biggest competitor when it, when it came out, you know, for people yeah. that don't know that. Because, like, it, it's kind of looked at now, like, as a bit of a, you know, playful game now. And it, but it, when it came out, like, it, it was kind of like a serious attempt at, like, uh, the at sim racing i I, I feel to break into that whole simcade thing on the arcades yeah yeah and um on the consoles and yeah back I know, before I they ever really achieved it i think that everybody just said they did yeah toka was pretty big back then too yeah i heard that over over uh forza yeah i do remember that day. game yeah you're right <clears throat> I, I wouldn't even consider that to be in the same league as the old gran turismos as far as physics and simulating any kind of real driving Talking about con consoles, <clears throat> you know, I don't Can think I they're one to that category of um, Mary Fuck Kill. What, what's like the new direct? Okay, yeah. The, the developers, the people that developed the games, have all gone on to different gaming franchises like Dirt, you know, like not like Dirt Rally, but Dirt and uh, like Forza and whatnot. I have one of the games sitting over here in my, my stack. <laughs> Your game um, stash. Project Gotham Racing. Yeah, I did like that game. Yeah, it you're right. It wasn't a sim game at all, but it was just fun. I thought Project Gotham Racing turned into another franchise, didn't it? Like they they uh, took mo most kind of yeah. Yeah, they took most of the the best employees and they they formed a new studio. Wasn't it like a uh who was it? Yeah, but I I I, I agree. I, I I remember that game fondly and I remember being pretty impressed with it, and I, I was really disappointed when, when I kind of found out that they were going to be no longer. You know? Yeah, like PGR 3 and 4 were both really good. 3 was better in my opinion. But it was, it kind of, it got my attention because they had some of the, um, like the driving training aspects built into it, kind of like Gran Turismo mm -hmm. did. You know, you're driving through cones or you're trying to avoid certain sections and they teach you how to take a corner. Yeah. But it was all for like a point system, and then... Like when you're actually racing, you could drift or like do tricks, not like flipping your car. But like BMX tricks. You could do little things to like get points to to build up your whatever your reputation or whatever it hmm. is, so that you can buy better vehicles. And Didn't they that have game, weather. Yeah, yeah, I do. Didn't that game have drifting in it too? I think so. At least like built into the driving itself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were able to drift. I don't know if they had like a drift yeah. mode. <laughs> Go down to Tokyo. So I don't think console gaming is brought up enough in the sim racing world, you know, in terms of how important it is. Because that's how I got started. Yeah, yeah, same here. And uh, I think that's how you know, because everyone focuses on PC because it's such an like an open thing, you know, an open platform, you know, and, and it really is yeah. like the sort of uh, the holy grail of sim racing. At least it is right now. Um, yeah. How do how do you feel about you know? PlayStation specifically, you know, making only certain wheelbases, only certain gear working with their, their uh, hardware. All right. Here's a lobby real quick. Oh, what's that? Nine, nine C. Two nines? One nine. No, no, one nine. Well, two nines now, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's nine C, one nine. Is this the same course? No. It seems like a brutal course, but uh, maybe. Yeah, I don't think I changed it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for, for, pe for people watching, I'm sure this is gonna be a really nice image. You can you can't see anything. It's just fucking raining. <laughs> no, <a> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the Bruce C's lighting engine is fucking garbage. Um, they need to fix that. WC headlights are bright as hell, and you can see pretty damn yeah. good. You know, they, it's not like you a. Can't see shit in this game. They they went out and played like some <laughs> Slender Man in Did real life. Flashlights to the front of a car. But yeah, so getting into the console gameplay, 
and, and whatnot. Like, like, how do you feel about Sony doing that? Like, uh, you know, locking down their system to where like it's it's so proprietary. That you you got to have stuff that has our brand logo on it. You know. I guess it kind of goes into that if if it's for like a specific standard, then that's cool. But if it's all just to like give Sony money, then that blows. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, they are a business, and they got to make their money, and but they like, want to make a profit, so. Like, if they started locking people out, if they don't have, like, a direct drive, I think that'd really suck. Just to, like, piggyback off of that real quick, it's kind of yeah. like their VR structure. I get they want to have their Sony licensed product, but I think it'd also be great if you have a VR system, like a VR headset, that you could just play their VR games on it. Yeah. Plug it into the USB ports, set it up, because... You know, most people can't run uh, most VR games at, like, 2800 by 1600 anyway. Yeah. You're going to get a little bit of blurriness out of it, so why not just configure it so that the image coming out of the system is the image coming out of the system, and you just kind of have to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I actually like that idea. Play in VR. Yeah, and then, I mean, I know they want to be a big player in the VR space, and they are. You know, I think they're the biggest be besides, like, uh, you know, Facebook. Or Meta, yeah. sorry. Meta now. Um, meta, meta book. Yeah, they're, they're killing off the Oculus. H how do you feel about Facebook what? in general? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, they've, they're killing off the brand, and now it's going to be called Meta. Um, I haven't read all of the information coming out about the Meta. I just know that they're trying to end calling Facebook Facebook and they're trying to diversify, I yeah. guess. So, so you're saying you I haven't read... It's probably to try and get away from the negativity mm, on yeah. Facebook. I think that's the main thing. But but you're saying that you haven't read uh, about med uh? Med uh? Read uh, about med uh? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> That was brutal. Okay. Um, I, I know my place. <laughs> no more. Whatever, man. You're a better driver than me, so. <laughs> no. It's all good. Um. No. I just flipped the Whoa, car. Whoa! Did you just do a front flip? <laughs> Was yeah. that a front flip? <laughs> and the car's still alive. <laughs> you know, that's something I don't think we see enough in, in sim racing is front flips. Do you have any regrets as a sim racer? Like, uh, anything that, that has brought negativity to your life about sim racing? Not that I know of. You're like, ask my wife. <laughs> yeah. What's the main... The main thing you're most proud of? With sim racing? Uh, probably just actually learning how to use the damn wheel. <laughs> I mean, when I first started, it was... It was a challenge. Like, I know people say it's... Well, you already know how to drive, right? Haha. Uh -huh. But it's a different system. Yeah. Like, when I first started Dirt Rally 2, I couldn't drive it for crap. Yeah. Sliding off the road, couldn't control the throttle, and, you know, now I can play sometimes in the top, like, 100 to 200, and that's yep. pretty cool to me. Yeah, you're really fast in that game. Not consistently, but <laughs> once in a while I have that good day. You have sort of a Colin McRae approach to, to racing, which is appropriate. You do have to kind of pro reprogram your brain to to interpret certain signals that you're getting from the game, you know? Do you, do you feel more confident as a driver in your daily life because of sim racing? No, I wouldn't say I do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're the first person to say no on that one. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I've had uh, a lot of driving experience before I came into sim racing. Okay. So, I mean, I already know what I'm capable of with a car. I mean, I'm not out rallying. I don't mm -hmm. have real rally experience, so I, you know, if I were to do that, I'd have to start from zero anyway. Do you feel like you've more or less trained your brain to be able to adapt to split section, uh, split second decisions quicker? Maybe interpreting fast visual data and having a response to it in that regard. Yeah. Okay. Because like, again, like I'm not out actually rallying. I don't have real rally experience, but I yeah. Mean, as far as recognizing something quickly like that, maybe, yeah. So if I give you a scenario, or a scenario, depending on where you're from, um, would you more confidently handle a dangerous situation, do you, do you feel, like maybe a, a car accident? 
No. <laughs> I mean, it might if somebody, if you're young and you don't have a lot of experience with dangerous situations or high speed driving or rallying, then I think it probably could help. Okay. Because, you know, just like playing an FPS, it helps develop your reaction time. Yeah. Your, your twitch Helping reflexes. Helping interpret your visual responses. Yeah. But I'm not sure what you mean by, like, reacting to a wreck. Do you mean just, like, or, or like getting like, out of the wreck? Yeah, like, like responding to it in an appropriate not way to where you don't. And, yeah. Yeah. Like overcorrecting. Okay. Do you feel like you have more knowledge about real-life physics based on, on your experience with sim racing? Like, coming into this, um, I didn't know how to drift at all. Okay. You know, you see it and you're like, oh, I can do that. But really, you're like, no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, having done this for a while now, a couple of years, I feel like I at least have a working knowledge of how to. Like, I realize yeah. this is slightly contradictory to the answer I gave a minute ago to your previous <laughs> question. <but laughs> asking me gotcha questions, you motherfucker. <laughs> Look at that! We got a we got a sun flare at night. I, I'll, I'll zoom in on that on the the replay there. But we had a sun flare at night. There was no sun out, and we had a sun flare on the windshield, which doesn't even make sense because our eye, eyeballs aren't cameras. But okay, they're not. I mean, I guess they're kind of like flesh cameras. Fourteen gigapixels. <laughs> gigapixels. That, number. That's insane. For those of you that don't know this, uh, Two Left also has a tech-focused channel called Hardly Tech. I haven't done any, like, super in-depth. I try to keep the information kind of, not vague, but I try to keep it easy to understand. There are lots of tech channels, of course. It's the internet, it's YouTube. But there's a lot of times there's, like, these specific questions that don't really seem to get answered. Hmm. And it kind of, um, it, it's kind of started out of that. For instance, the RAM comparison between Oloy and G-Skill. Yeah. Which has not taken off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Nobody's watching that video. <laughs> I thought it, I thought it might actually be do well because uh you know Oloy is like sort of a more budget focused brand and I thought you know a lot of people would probably purchase that not really knowing too much about RAM like me so um but it's it's like those kind of things like okay but these both use a specific chipset but how are they different Yeah they're both made by Samsung one's an one's a C die one's a B die but how much different are they really and, you know, other questions like, okay, I have a couple of different CPUs I can use to test on. Just how much of a difference is there for a specific program? Yeah. There aren't a lot of, a lot of channels that go into, like, the specific questions that seem to always fall through the cracks. You can always get, like, a general piece of information from watching a number of channels like Jay's or uh, uh, Gamers Nexus. They do a really good job at what they do, and I'm not trying to harp on them because, hmm. you know, they provide a lot of really good information. Yeah. But when it comes to it, like, okay, I'm not getting certain answers. I want these answers. Yeah. So why don't I just do it? Keep it on the tech side of things. You know, you, you know a lot more than most of us when it comes to, like, you know, components and things. What do you think the absolute baseline build would be for someone getting into sim racing, you know? If you just wanted to have a broad system that can play any racing game, and let's say we're sticking to like 1080p, okay, I would say probably uh, any six core, any modern six core rather. <laughs> CPU. Um, yeah, like a 3600 or like a 60 uh, 6600 from Intel. Okay. 6700. Um, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and if you're going to go with two sticks, go with high speed. You can always. Don't, if you're uh, going to go with two sticks, don't go with oil, Oloy. Yeah. <laughs> Get the high speed. Yeah. You can always tune the latencies to be a, a little bit tighter. Yeah. Some okay. performance. Um, SATA or an NVMe doesn't really yeah. matter. If you're just going for budget, get an SATA, whatever's cheap, but it meets like 400 megs per second. Now, you're talking about uh, the, the drive, right? The, yeah. Um, for those not tech savvy. Uh, a drive of some sort to store your games. Solid state, though. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Hard drives are too slow anymore. Yeah. They're great for storage, but they're too slow. It's mainly the IOPS. The the random IOPS are too low, way too low. Um, but for like a GPU, probably a 1650 or a 1650 Super, you can get going probably around medium settings, uh, 60 FPS. 
any power supply that is gold rated or above 500 watts. And if you're going for like sim racing hardware, probably have to go back to you. <laughs> Somebody that has more experience with like the actual wheels and stuff. So like, what about someone building a PC specifically for VR use, VR sim racing? Definitely get a better CPU then. If you're, if you're wanting to go to VR, eight cores, multi-threaded. Like a, um, so like a 5,800? Like, yeah. Okay. I would say that something around that level is basically the minimum. And for graphics, I mean, it depends on how sharp you want your image. So it kind of depends on the display you're using, the HMD. But probably something 2080 super level. 2070 will get you by, but a 2080 will probably do a little better. What would the equivalent be in a 30 series? Is that like a, a, 20, a 3070? Something like that? Uh, like a 3060 Ti, which I actually did a review on recently. If you're going older gen, like the 10 series, probably like a 1080, 1080 Ti is the minimum. Uh, from okay. AMD, you'd probably want something like the 5500 XT as a bare minimum. Uh, VR games are very CPU intensive. Yeah, yeah, they are. Um, I found that out the hard way. Now, now, what about what about case fans? Do you think you should go for one inch fans or, or twelve inch fans? Fifty inch fans, man. <laughs> just just <laughs> one one big fucking warehouse fan for your just PC. Get a warehouse fan and yeah. put it right in front of your face. I actually do have. I mean, a, if you're gonna a, go with one inch, inch fans, get like a hundred of them, five thousand RPM each. Just yeah, so they, they, so they could cut a hole in the fucking ozone layer. <laughs> <laughs> You've been sim racing for yeah about about two years, a little bit longer than me. What, what, what's something that you could recommend? To something that some, somebody wanting to get into this, that, you know, they, they don't have gear, they don't have, they, they have no baseline. They, they're just like completely lost. What, what's something you'd recommend to them? Read a lot of reviews, watch videos. You know, when I went into purchasing, I had, I'd been looking through reviews and uh, videos for a couple of months. Because for me, this was a big purchase and I was, yeah. I wanted to get into sim racing, but it's, it's kind of the same response I think most people have. It's like, man, this is a big investment. Am yeah. I going to play it enough to really justify buying it? Yeah. How much how much realism like am I going to get from this experience and do I want a immersive experience or do I just want to have fun? And mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with either. Yeah. You know, I think there's a place for everybody in sim racing. Uh, it's just read reviews, figure out what you're looking for and then focus on that. You know, you can always upgrade a piece of hardware. You can always sell off something to somebody who is actually looking at maybe what you have anyway. Yeah. Um if you're not sure, read reviews, start cheap. And honestly, I would say it's more important to have a good set of pedals than it is a wheel. Yeah. Which I feel like a lot of people say anymore. <laughs> and if I had known that going in, I probably would have got a different set altogether. But you have to figure out what kind of driving and stuff you want to do. Yeah. And then make your purchase based on that. Yeah. Um, I thought you had more to say. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, uh, every piece of gear in sim racing is is crazy expensive. For you know, yeah. for until you you kind of experience sim racing and, and really start seeing the value in in gear, it's it's almost like it, it it feels like every piece of gear isn't worth it. One thing I wish I'd known more about with this wheel is the clacking. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I remember it. You're very familiar with it. Yeah. Um, I, I remember from experiencing it too. I, I I remember it. Yeah, it does have decent feedback. It's just the fine detail isn't really present on the wheel, and it's substituted with like a arcadey feeling. Do, 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 yeah, <laughs> and it just kind of vibrates all over. And so, I mean, it's it's not the end of the world. It's the little things that you kind of have to look for, whether or not it's gonna like make or break your experience. Yeah, that that's a good point. Um, and I don't think that's brought up enough. Like every wheelbase on the market is pretty damn similar, you know? It's gonna yeah. pr provide you with a pretty similar experience. Yeah, there's yeah, there's way better uh, force feedback quality and some of them like, you know, if you wanna pay like two or three grand or something like that, but it's like, is it that much better, you know? Is it gonna um, make your driving any better? Are you gonna enjoy it? Will and that- notice? Yeah, and that, like I said, like uh, I get beat by people with like way cheaper gear than me. Like, and that's what, that's not yeah. why, <laughs> that's not why I, I buy the gear I do, I buy, buy the gear I do for, you know, for specific reasons for, cause I always want it to feel a certain yeah. way. Whatever, man. <laughs> no, I mean, the little things make or break the experience, just like with everything else, you know, are you going to have to deal with taking the friggin' the nut off of the wheel all the time to swap out for a different game you're mm -hmm. going to play or a different system you're going to play on? Um, every time you start up, are you going to have to 
deal with resetting your pedals, you know? Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's a good point to bring up. Yeah, if, if you are into multiple types of racing, you know, F1 and drifting, you know, you're not going to have a fun time drifting on an F1 wheel. Um, it's going to really hurt your hand. <laughs> it goes into that. You have to know <laughs> yeah. what you want to get into. Obviously, you, you can do every form of racing with a round wheel. <clears throat> like a, that's really. I don't feel like I'm saying anything of value anymore. <laughs> 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 there you are and that that was valuable right there okay here's a good one if you had a single sim racing game that you had to play for the rest of your life which one would it be your mom <laughs> I had to play one sim forever. No, no other sims were. No other is sims. Sim like strictly realistic sim or like any racing game. Is this an open question? We we can make it an open question, but I, I was more leaning <laughs> towards like Actual established sim. sims. But now let's okay. do it. Let's do a two part question. One one racing game and then one sim. Any racing game that I could just have fun. You like, cru like, like the... cruising USA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Road rash. It's got a lot of depth, you know. Um, yeah, the, the content's amazing. Not bikers, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, any racing game, just like have fun, like classic. Probably be like Gran Turismo Three. I think okay. is like the peak of fun. For yeah, me. There, there, there's a lot of there's a fucking shit ton of Someone content. Out there's too. gonna be like that game's shit. That game is fun. <laughs> that game's about? awesome, man. That, that's like that's the grandfather of like getting into some real shit you know but like uh, simulation wise like trying to be authentic simulator type of racing game out of what i've experienced i'd probably stick with acc um okay like the league racing it's 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 not perfect but it's definitely better than what i experienced with gt sport yeah and i feel like the feedback overall is really good minus the curbs <laughs> mm. my god <laughs> i can tell it's a touchy issue those for curbs you. Uh, Killed my brother. <laughs> I don't like talk about it. <laughs> no, it's it's ruined a few races for me. But I mean, outside of that, the game's really good. Physics are good. The driving feels really good. What, what do you think about people using the term sausage curbs? <laughs> I've never heard that, so <laughs> I probably don't play it enough. <laughs> oh, I, I've been having this idea, and and I really want someone to to mesh the two together but you know how, uh, how i'm really into like horror games okay i want there to be a horror yeah. simulation racing game interesting like just focusing on, on the aspects of of the scary parts of racing or maybe or maybe just straight up just making uh some straight up fucking some monster shit in there like like, like you're, you're racing and then you, and, and your rear view mirror is godzilla like chasing you like boom, boom, boom. you know like just well, like you have to get, like get out of the car it's at, like stops and like resource manage and find shit and then like you get you get mobbed and so you have to like run away get to your car and like drive off but you have to like drift and like rally your way to the next city kind of i think thing. i think more along the lines of like beam ng like how, how they have scenarios Okay. Like, uh, like, and, and you could like download different scenarios, right? Um, okay. And yeah, like w one content pack would be, uh, what's that one monster that like just appears out of nowhere? Like it'll appear in like on your windshield, like, and then, then you have to like keep the the car from from not crashing. Uh, what is it like, Baba Duke? You know? And then uh, no idea. <laughs> that's it's kind of like an indie film, I think. But yeah, like uh, or, or not my thing. Or like it. That's a good example. Like you see, like a okay. red, a uh, red balloon coming in your back seat, right? Like you, you'll choose like a regular car, and, and then you have to uh, respond appropriately, like uh, not freak out, and um, <laughs> all or, VR, by the way. Yeah, or or like uh, you know how like in horror movies, like you'd be driving down like a dark street, and then like there'll be like a little girl just standing in the middle of the street with a teddy bear, <laughs> like nope. with her with her. <laughs> with her head just like looking straight down like the hair is hanging over her face and then she like doesn't move her feet but somehow she's getting closer the entire time you know 
like yeah. just just situations like that and then and you, you'd have to like it, it would be simulator physics right simulation physics mm -hmm. but but like a horror experience i could see that there would be a market for it like I, people would play it i would play it and I'd if you're it. if you're out there <laughs> if you're out there and you're able to do it you're free to take my idea and use it as maybe give me some credit for it but like you know i'm not going to sue you, you. nuggets I mean, I, I'm not really all for eating chicken, but I do eat chicken sometimes because, you know, I have... When they die? No, I, 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 we bury them. I, I can't do that. Ah. Um, Fair. And we've we've had to bury a couple. Yeah. Not, yeah. Um, damn, that just... That ruined my buzz. I'm sorry. Yeah, you just escorted that down into the grave. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so no oh, no you, you're good like that wasn't you, your intention that is just how where my mind took it you know this is exactly the interview i wanted um we got a bunch of juicy i don't know how to take that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna make this guy look like an idiot <laughs> no uh, i am a potato <laughs> <all right. laughs> If you were a potato, what kind would you be? Mashed or uh Oh, I'd, baked? I'd be a baked potato. Okay. Would you just be like a standard baked potato, like in the aluminum foil? Salt and pepper, a little bit of sour cream, slab of butter, a little bit of garlic. There you go. Okay. So you're, you're the type to like break the potato open and, and insert it in there, or, you, or do you do, just do it on the top of the skin? Well, I'll break the potato open, put all the toppings in. You're like, I'm not a heathen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not sophisticated, but I do like yeah. a little bit of niceties. <laughs> okay. Um, I know it's too creamy, but I enjoy it. <laughs> I actually do like some creamy potatoes. Mm. During all the holidays, I actually make uh, mashed potatoes, I, I, and that's like my, my thing. Like, love mashed like, potatoes. That's like my role, right? Like Gene will be like, can you make the mashed potatoes? Everyone loves your mashed potatoes, you know? So the trick to mash, good mashed potatoes that everyone loves mine and they're like, oh, these, these taste so different is like, a, um, obviously seasoned salt. I shouldn't say obviously, cause that, mm -hmm. that's not like a, maybe a typical thing, but yeah, seasoned salt and mustard. Really, so, mustard? Okay. Yeah, um, I usually put like a, sometimes I'll do a spicy mustard and sometimes I'll do like, just like, you know, some Frenches or something like that. But uh, yeah, just, and, and it gives it a, a unique sort of color and it, and it kind of intrigues people because it's not like, you know, you have like the sort of the red fleckles, if that's a word, uh, from like the- It is the, now. <laughs> yeah, freckles and, and flecks, you know, fle uh, fleckles. Yeah, fleckles. Um, I gotcha. I, I kind of relate that to foreskin in my mind when I hear the word fleckles. Schmigma. Well, end of the interview. We're done. <laughs> this interview you just went to shit. <laughs> um, okay. I don't get paid enough for this. <laughs> no. <laughs> Back to the mashed potatoes, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you get like the sort of red fleckles in there, like, uh, and that is is kind of intriguing to people. And then the the sort of base color is a, a yellowish tint, which is not really associated with appetizing colors usually. Yeah. But it's usually like associated with like rancid food and things, but it does make nice contrast against uh, normal mashed potatoes. And I think people are willing to try new things as long as it's mashed potatoes. Okay. <laughs> Just start putting random shit in potatoes and be like, hey, it's good. <laughs> it's mashed potatoes. You know, it's like, mashed. yeah, you're, you're willing to take the chance, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Never eating your mashed potatoes. Yeah, but yeah, everybody, unless every single person I've ever talked to is lying to me, which could be the case, um, has appreciated my mashed potatoes, so. Well, I'll have to try some mustard in one of my mashed potato recipes. Now, I'm not talking like the, the whole bottle. I'm just talking about like maybe. Oh, no, we're going whole bottle. 20 ounce. Okay, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Get the fucking family size. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. like a couple of tablespoons or what? Um, Costco size. Okay, so like accidentally the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, an accidental amount, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, was a, that was a solid start right there. Oh yeah, <laughs> just rolling right through. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know rolling starts were loud and rally, but... Um, 
<laughs> they are in the official rallies. Okay. Yeah. This is the official game, so I guess it's okay. Um, you, you're a pretty tech-savvy guy, right? Like, outside of PC stuff too, right? A little bit. Do you feel like there's a certain technology that you feel could be used for sim racing to, to better what we have available right now? Airplane turbines for a drag, <laughs> for a wheelbase. <laughs> Just have it fucking rip your arms off, you know? <laughs> 10,000 newton meters. Yeah. It's so accurate, guys. Yeah. You right. feel, you'll feel everything promise. that single time. Yeah. Cockpits have come a long way, but I feel like we could go a little further. Okay. For the people that want to be more immersive, you know? Like, when I was a kid, mind you, I was pretty young, <laughs> like 10 or 11, I think. You were young as a um, kid? Oh, yeah. Were you? How old were you when you were a kid? <laughs> like 45, you know? Okay, so you had a lot of life experience <laughs> at that point. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't mention this, I'm like Benjamin Button. I don't, I haven't seen it, but I, I think I understand the reference, just based on uh, your, your cues. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, context. How does that make you feel? I feel knowledgeable. <laughs> <laughs> I well. feel knowledgeable beyond my years. Um, so, like, when I was a kid, you, know, you, go, you, go, you go to the arcades. I know this isn't really something that exists anymore for most people. Yeah. <clears throat> An arcade was a place you would go to play games. It would yeah. have, like, a cabinet <laughs> that would have a screen on it and some buttons. Well... Some arcades were extra fancy, and they'd have like Daytona 98 or yeah. Daytona 2000, and you could like get into a faux cockpit and put some quarters in the machine and play for a little bit. I've always wanted to have that kind of experience for sim racing, not necessarily like a full car, but you could like yeah. pop into a cockpit and you wouldn't have to like have a bunch of monitors, it'd just be the windows are the screens. Yeah. And it was set to your field of vision, or that would you would preserve, you would uh, observe sitting in the car. Preserve. <laughs> <laughs> some delicious preserve. Preserves. I like to enjoy some preserves when I rally. <laughs> He's fucking uh, spread it all over the wheel with a butter knife. Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> Seedy. It helps keep my hands on the wheel. Yeah. I like picking the seeds out my fucking teeth. Yeah. <laughs> It'd have like motion and shit built in. Like I know we're getting there, but I'm. That would be so freaking cool. I do want to go back to the preserves for a second. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I. <laughs> I just think talking I, and rallying <laughs> is hard. Damn it. <laughs> on the, if you put enough preserves on the rim of the wheel, and put your wheel into drift mode. You can hold a, hold a piece of toast. Yeah, getting back into the arcades. Yeah, I, I think it'd be cool to just have a more authentic cockpit uh, without having to get a, a half cut of a car, you know? Um, and I do agree, like, just like re replace the, the windshields with, you know, the equivalent size monitors, like, and have the resolution be like, you know, like retina, you know? Yeah. But, but yeah, I, I think that, and actually, th this actually relates to one of the things I was coming up with. Um, tell me what you think about this idea, actually. I want to get your opinion. Okay. Um, you know how Tesla's incorporating game consoles in, in their, their cars? Yeah. And you know how Just also... Use, like, the wheel to play a game? Use the wheel, because it's, elec uh, it's electric power steering, right? Yeah. And I'm sure it's like probably drive-by-wire, because there's no cable. Um, it's drive by wire. It's probably brake by wire. Maybe not, um, it, but they could they could do that though, right? And then yeah, have have like a sort of heads up display that you could display on the windshield, kind of like how you can see that your your speed on like a Honda Civic windshield, you know, like they could like project yeah. something onto the windshield. So you could still see like traffic and stuff, but you you could play uh, you could play a game while you're driving. Eventually, like when when, when they take driving away from you as a privilege. You know, in the future. Well, you know. <laughs> is that where we're going um, now? Just definitive? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's gonna happen, man. It really is. Like, there's no doubt. Like, it, it's a... People are dying in car accidents all the time. People could drink people and were, like, drive. People are like, Man, I remember when I had this this Ford Escort. You could just smell the octane. Yeah. Hit those brakes and the car would lurch. Like, oh, shut the fuck up, you fogey. What are you talking about? Nobody drives anymore. Can, can you smell octane? 
<sighs> that, that was that was your answer. Okay. That was my answer. <laughs> I like it. Um, you smell fuel, so you know. This is an area in in WC10 where I'm like, damn, this is convincing. This this looks like a real place. Um, texture detail on the rocks and stuff. Maybe not the textures, but the the layout, uh, the roughness of the road. Like I've been on okay. a lot of roads like this in real life, um, and I don't think Dirt Dirt Rally 2.0 captures this feeling right here. Yeah, not really. It's um, fun, but it doesn't have this kind of terrain. I just feel like th this the kind of terrain. <laughs> 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 I just feel like the level of detail in, in this, like, this, these specific kind of areas is way beyond what Dirt Rally 2 offers. Maybe we'll get lucky with a 3 at some point. They'll kind of meld. You know, maybe an interesting thought would be, uh, Codemasters got taken up by EA, EA's got a ton of money, why don't, when, when they lose the license, why don't they take the best people from this game and hire them for Codemasters? It would be pretty cool. <clears throat> like take the stage designers, put them on on Dirt Rally 3.0, and the engine, and see what they can do with it. I mean, if they if they turn it into you know a stuttery mess, that wouldn't be good. But you know, I know I'm throwing a lot of WC10 stabs in there, but you know, we paid good money for this shit. You know, I pre-ordered this game. Yeah, me too. Do you, do you feel like Steam is the the fanatic equivalent? Uh, you know, in terms Monopoly. of Monopoly. Yeah. Do you, do you think like? There are, you know, could be better services out there that we're kind of ignoring, but we don't because we're so established in this one library. Um, I think the other services will get better. They're not quite as uh, old as Steam. Steam's been around for a long time. Yeah. But I think, like, Epic Store, eventually they'll probably get to a similar level of uh, integration if they don't get pressured out by anybody, you know, no specific companies or anything, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, like, Xbox, you know, they've got their whole, uh, what do they call it? Xbox Live. You can buy the service for, like, a year and play whatever games you want. Yeah, uh, Xbox, PC. yeah, yeah. And it's a little bit jank, but it's getting better. Jank! I feel like Steam's gonna have to step it up here in the next few years to keep it competitive. Okay, uh, so how do you feel about the exclusivity of, like, say, Gran Turismo 7? Do you think they're limiting their audience, or do you think uh, that's a good move for them? Personally, I do think they're limiting their audience. Um, probably not a popular opinion. I get that they have their franchise built on PlayStation, on Sony. Yeah. But if they had, even if it was, like, separate from the console gamers, we could only race against other PC, I feel like a lot of people would get into it. Yeah, if I had had access to a Gran Turismo on PC back in the day, I would have played it. Do you think uh, the development, you know, in terms of physics and things, are being held back by being on console because most people don't have a wheel setup? Um, I don't know. I guess it, if they're fine developing a game meant for controller and it plays well, that's fine. But yeah, if they're looking to capture people playing wheels you know, more authentic sim style than I think maybe. I mean, they do have the popular companies. They've got Thrustmaster and Fanatec and, and uh, Logitech. Yeah. And, and I'm sure they have like but a separate division. The hardware will only last so long. Yeah. Like, I, I'm sure they have a separate team that, that focuses 100% on only wheel gameplay, you know. So I'm sure it's a pretty focused group, you know. Yeah. Um, like I can't imagine... For the platform. Yeah. But, I mean, you, you have to take into account, like, if they were to use the same amount of their pool of funds, you know, and, and devote more of those funds to development of, of physics and wheel Im implementation, uh, you know, would it be better? I'm sure they could develop a very good sim if, you know, if they had that kind of budget and they geared it more toward the sim heavy crowd or even on PC just a separate title maybe yeah I think I'm sure they could do something really good with it I mean look at Gran Turismo <laughs> come a long way yeah it's like ignore sport ignore sport it's not worth it yeah yeah um 
I thought that was funny how you, you kind of use Gran Turismo as an example for how, how good Gran, Gran, Turismo, <laughs> Gran Turismo could be if they... Um, well, you know, they could compete with ACC. Oh, yeah. Like, I think... I, I would venture to say Gran Turismo has the biggest budget of any racing game. You think that's accurate? They have a large install base, even just strictly being on the PlayStation. Do you, do you think that's accurate, though? Like, do you think they're the highest budget racing game? I don't know if they're the highest budget, but... Or, or highest right. highest budget sim racing game, because I'm, I'm sure, like, Need for Speed probably has a maybe a bigger budget. <laughs> maybe not. I don't know. I used to be into Need for Speed, but not anymore. But I mean, if they had that kind of... If they had, Customization? Like, I don't know how to phrase it. Like, even if nice. they had the largest budget, budget, if they don't have the right platform and the right people working on it, you know, they're not going to have a lot of success. Yeah. I don't know that their physics would ever be like iRacing real, but they wouldn't have to if they had enough people playing. I think that might be the ultimate game for some people if if uh, you took like the like the open world Need for Speed games, you know, had that level of customization. That gave um, like real physics. Yeah, I mean, I mean, physics. And to a degree, we have that like with with games like Beam BeamMG and a set of courses, but that, that it takes a, a specific skill set to be able to create content. You know, you can't just go in there yeah. and, and change out. Uh, your body kit or you know your your engine parts or whatever as a user you have to kind of do that as a modder right so like to have like a, a game where you, you would have that level of customization like in a need for speed game but to have it like be realistic physics like i think there'd be a huge market for that i'd play it see if it was good because i have played a little bit of like i said before i played a little bit of the um forza horizon 4 and yeah like the physics aren't realistic but it is neat driving around in, the, in like a big sandbox. It just doesn't hold my attention because there's not, one, it's repetitive, and two, the physics aren't there for me. You know, I can just pick up a controller and feel like I'm playing just as well as with a, a wheel. Yeah. Well, well think, think about it like this. Uh, take a set of course of Competizione's graphics and, and game engine, you know, like the, the graphics and everything, uh, and the yeah. physics, and the cars, you know, and, and the tracks and stuff. Um, or, or maybe just like have a, a local area, right? Like an open world local area and you could pull off the track in that same car and, and you could drive around the city, you know, and when you want to race, you, you, you race to, you, you drive illegally because you can't drive <laughs> most race cars on, on the public roads. Um, but, um, but yeah, you drive illegally, right? So you, you could satisfy two mindsets because... Uh, you know, the people that like to street race, the people that like to, you know, there's a certain mindset that you have to be in to, to want to do that, right? Like, a, it's kind of like a taboo thing, you know, like people that yeah. like drift, like, pe people that drift on the streets and things like that. Wouldn't it be cool if there was a game like where, where it was like realistic physics and, uh, but, but with the same level of detail, like of the, the organized races too, like you could, you could pull in because I mean, life, life is open world, you know? At any point, you could take your car and... and Nobody and, told and, me that. Yeah, you're, you're like, damn it. <laughs> um, Wait. I mean, instead of going into the pits, right? You could, you could fucking take that million-dollar car and fucking just dr drive out drive the gate up. and then, you know, have a bunch of cops behind you. But that would be part of it. It's like Grand Theft Auto, <laughs> a set of Corsa, you know? Yeah. There would be a market for that, I think. Um, I feel like enough people would at least try it. I mean, I'd yeah. play it. Like I said, I'd try it out, see if it's good. Yeah, I mean, maybe we should just Why use not? this use this as platform as as a think tank for what we want to see in the future of re, uh, sim driving. Sim driving. Why not? I mean, if we get enough voices that want a similar product, why not see if we can get it made? A Similac product. Similac. Isn't that like a? Um, isn't Similac uh, one of those? Uh, isn't that like a? Okay. Like a butt like, thing. <laughs> <laughs> like a butthole douche. You know, like, um, you okay. sound much more knowledgeable on this than I do. So I'll defer to your job. It, it's it's either <laughs> it's either like one of those bottle things like when you're constipated, like an enema. I think it's yeah, an enema. Or or it's like a, a medication that makes you go. I think it's one of the two. 
I think um, you're right. Or maybe it's a combination of both. Maybe it's like a little kit. You know, it's like a little, little package of, of doo-doo goods, you know? The boost kit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Total shit, in other words, right? Oh, uh, right. man. Um, you're so level one, two, or three. How bad you got to go? <laughs> so not to put you in an uncomfortable position, but I'm about to put you in one. From an outside perspective, not entirely because you are in the Fnatic ecosystem, how, do, how does it make you feel like with, with Fnatic doing stuff like that, like the boost kit or, or the, the, the load cell kit for the pedals or uh, having to buy a cable to be able to run any of their products on a PC, you know, uh, a separate cable, uh, yeah, things like that. Like, how do you feel about that? I am. Um, well, if anybody watching is familiar with my comments, <laughs> I feel like I've been pretty clear about it. <laughs> I think it's crap. Like, yeah. okay, I get that you can buy a bundle and that's cool. But mm -hmm. why should I have to step up to a certain level to get the functionality that was intended for the product in the first place? Yeah. Why yeah. take the Apple approach when it just pisses people off? I get that you want to make money in your business and you're not about handouts. That's fine. You can make money. There's nothing wrong with that. But this isn't just about Newton meters. With the boost kit, you're also getting more detail out of the wheel. You're being locked out of half of the experience if you don't buy the boost kit. It's, it's literally being withheld from you. And then we find out that it's basically the same power brick as you get with the CSL Elite anyway. <laughs> you yeah. can just modify it and you're good to go. I actually, in a future sim interview, I'm actually interviewing uh, Polymer, the guy that developed the, the concept of using a DIY power supply, and he's confirmed it to work. If you had the proper voltage regulation for one of these and you used a power supply that could support like 225 watts, could you get more detail out of the wheel? I mean, I would imagine so. It's just a basic motor, if, if right? The heat dissipation, if the heat dissipation holds at a level that the wheel is stable, yeah. What could you do? It, it's also been confirmed that there is no built-in circuitry to limit uh, the power, the, the the usage of the wheelbase with other power supplies. Because yeah. basically, at the end of the day, it's just a power supply, and that's why I think it's so shady of them to market it as a booster kit. It's not a booster kit. It's mm -hmm. what makes the wheelbase work. You can't buy just the the base and then just be like, this is great. And then just like, what, how are you going to make it work? You, you need, you need it. It's not like an optional item. It's wireless. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it the just first, works off the earth's energy. Now, now if Fnatic develops something like that, uh, you know, the first Bluetooth, uh, <laughs> chargeable wheelbase. Yeah. Like I'm down. It's, but, uh, it's Qi powered. It's Qi wireless guys. Who do you think is really pushing the industry forward? Whether it be like a, a game, hardware, you know, who do you think is really, really doing good for the community? As far as like pushing technology where we're at right now, probably NVIDIA. Whether or not it's good for people specifically, I don't know. But they so, have their hands in a lot of different areas. All right, and, and does that, does that re relate to sim racing too? Are they in there? Well, I mean, they have GPUs. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel the, the shortage of... PC components has affected the sim racing community. Negatively. I don't know yeah. how negative, but it hasn't been great. I mean, Fanatec couldn't get their wheels out to meet demand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just having trouble with that. Probably everybody. Yeah, I'd say everybody because, I mean, you know, the, the silicon shortage or whatever, which I don't understand. Can you explain that to me? Isn't it just fucking sand? Like, how, how do we have a shortage of sand? Silicon is sand, sand right? The shortage of being able to process it. So, so they don't have enough like uh, magma centers to melt it down, or what? <laughs> okay, Doctor Evil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's more so having the right type of sand, and then having the ability to process enough of it to meet demand. The right type of sand. That sounds funny, but I, I understand there's different qualities of sand. Not all crystals are the same. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sounds like something you should tell someone that's like very spiritual, and they have like crystal necklaces you know like <laughs> this this Blue crystal is not, not the same as the green ones yeah th these have different qualities this one's for healing pro uh, i shouldn't make fun of those people because they there are some people that really believe in that and <laughs> yeah cut this, <laughs> yeah. Cut this i'm segment. not i'm not cutting that that's too good what about like dark crystals do you think that could be used for for canceled. cpu like uh dark crystals yeah <laughs> yeah like the show yeah <laughs> do you think those could be used for pc component oh what what about that new uh what is it Qu quantum 
quantum CPUs or whatever. Uh, quantum it's a, computing. Uh, yeah, it's a light a light based CPU, right? Um, it, you could define it that way, yeah. <laughs> but it's not the same kind of computing. Okay, so it's mainly just for like a huge load uh, calculating algorithms and shit. <laughs> you you gotta fucking put a huge load all over it. Uh, <laughs> splish splash, yeah, motherfucker. Space. Yeah. What what? Yeah, I'm I'm swimming in that shit. Um, <laughs> I'm swimming in data. I'm swimming in algorithms. What what were we talking about? Oh yeah, quantum com computing. So yeah, you don't think that that has a practical application in uh in consumer grade electronics? I mean, it, it might in the future, but not at this point. It's just not ready. Um, it's it's not the same kind of computing. Um, so, like, what we do with uh, our computers now is we transmit data from one point to another, and it's either a one or a zero, basically. Yeah. Or a combination thereof, telling you that, hey, you're seeing this game on screen, right? But quantum computing is more about... Um, not heuristics necessarily, but about I don't figuring know out means. whether or not something is or isn't without having all the data necessarily and making computations based on that. So something can be a one and a zero and you could compute for both instances. Let, let's say a programmer programmed some application and they put a two in there instead of like a one and a zero what would happen <laughs> well it depends on how a two is coded in that system if would a coded. would a black hole emerge uh, just they might be able to ask cern who's that is that someone knowledgeable about that um it's a organization you know like the large hadron collider and people yeah, you know a lot more about things than I do. Um, I'm not a quantum physicist. Yeah, I am a quantum physicist, so I guess I do more, no more than you. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm pretty proud of it. Do you feel like it was a cop-out in WC10's, or WC's part, to label the, the historic content as such, like when it's just like basically reskins of the same courses? I mean, I feel like it kind of is because I was hoping for stages that were based on the stages that were available then versus and not just now. having yeah. characters. Yeah. It's just the same stage. Yeah, there's more Bob Rosses in the audience and there's a lot of scenery to be painted so I can understand why there's a lot of them there, you know, or more of them there than now because, you know. Anyway, um, yeah, the reason I asked that is because, you know, um, I think we have a lot of similar views on on this game, being most of them disappointments. Um, I mean, it's fun. I enjoy the physics and the driving, but like, there's a lot that could be improved. For for those watching, I apologize for the lighting change. I, I have to turn the heater on because it's cold as hell in here. It's it's actually winter time. If you're watching this, uh, there's snow forming. Um, so I had to turn the heater on. Um, yeah, like for those that don't know, there actually is a mod that allows you to turn pretty much uh, any modern WC game made by Kyloton uh, to turn into an open world game, you know. Um, I remember you telling me about that. It's really cool, and it also makes it to where those unrealistic resets don't happen. You know, like, if you just kind of go off track, it'll just, like, take you out of it. Yeah. It's like, I hate that. I hate that so much. And they need to... Um, and I know their focus is on like online, right? Like they want an equalizer. So if someone goes off course, you know, it's like a set time, which doesn't make really in, yeah. any sense to me in the sense that you're trying to make a simulation, right? Because I mean, if you go off course, it should take however long it takes to get back up. And if you can't get back up, it's just like it is in real life. Your, your race is over, right? Like you, it's like if you crash into a tree in this game, like at 100 miles an hour, your race is over. So why shouldn't your race be over if you get stuck? Or go off a fucking cliff. If you, if you, dri if you drive straight off a cliff in this game, in WC10, in, in, in most WC games, your car is like undamaged a lot of times, and you get reset, and you get like a five second penalty. It's like, that's not a simulation. 
I mean, look at that beautiful front flip I did earlier. Yeah, and, and, you, and, and, you, were, and you drove away from that. I mean, it's possible you could drive away from that in real life, but I, that was a pretty big impact, and, and your front end would be destroyed in real life. Um, that was a pretty so, bad crash. Yeah, that, that was probably one of the worst ones I've seen in this game. Um, <laughs> not, no, no offense to your driving. It just, it's just like that was an extreme crash for you to be able to drive away from, you know? Yeah, um, it was pretty bad. And, and how, like, I how, didn't expect to drive away from that in a real car. With, with crashing being like a fundamental part of racing in general, and especially like rally racing, like you're almost expected to, to not make it through without damage, you know, um, through an entire rally. You know, you, you're going to make mistakes. Like that's one of the, the, the things. Impossible. Yeah, like you're going to go off course a little bit. You're going to uh, take tear off your your front splitter almost guaranteed you know if you have one of those it's going to be gone within a race or two <laughs> um yeah i mean like like w w with such a focus on that and especially in rally games you would think that it would be more of a priority of them to 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 really try to capture that um and i think that's one of the things holding this game back a lot it, it, from being like considered a you know a, a proper sim simulation game because um it, it's super unrealistic in that regard, um, and I hate that. Well, like, they have accessibility to worry about. I mean, I get yeah. it. Yeah. Like, have, like at least have the options that you, you know, you can have, like, fully authentic, or you can have some assists on, like, it, with other racing games. Yeah, there, there should so, be I mean, a dedicated... I don't expect that from Dirt. No. To be honest, because, I mean, it's Dirt. It's fun. It's meant to be fun and frenetic. But, if the, you know, I get what you're saying. This is, like... This is the rally game that's supposed to represent rally. Yeah. Yeah. Frenetic. Um, Frenetic. <laughs> Frenetic. <laughs> yeah, it's the new the new we'll, we'll start a new company. Yeah. Yeah. No crappy wheels and we call it Frenetic. Yeah, and they, and we could just be like, Well, what did you expect? It's frenetic. Yeah. Um Yeah, and you're right, you you don't really expect that as much from Dirt Rally the Dirt Rally series. Um, even though, even though they, they are the official license holders of uh, rally, World Rallycross. So actually, I do expect more from them in that regard. I, I do expect more in terms of physics and realism. Um, yeah. I think if you're the official game of anything racing related, I think it should be as realistic as possible. And they shouldn't be making compromises uh, to be approachable in, in the way that uh, Dirt Rally does. And, and I think you're right. Maybe a way to fight that is uh to make a dedicated hardcore mode you know a, a, yeah. an actual setting that that turns on the maybe, most realistic maybe just physics. my experience with dirt rally is just because i don't play the rally cross yeah i, I play it um you know when i play online i i play pretty much mostly rally cross because that's what's available that's what people are playing you know um so and, and it is one of the most fun racing experiences i can think of honestly uh it, it's so That's actually good that you get an enjoyment out of it yeah yeah and, and in terms of enjoyment like yeah. i do, i get a ton of enjoyment from dirt rally too but the the biggest glaring issues to me are are the physics because it's just like some of it just doesn't seem right like um you know and i and i am i am pulling from real world experience not with that powerful of a car, not with that expensive of a car, but I mean, like, uh, you know, it just, some of it just doesn't feel right, you know? Um, I get you. Yeah. I've, uh, I've bumped a rock and get shoved all the way across the track before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there, there's a lot of, like, you know, but yeah. Like 30 I, miles an hour. I, I do appreciate you, you bringing attention to the fact that it is still a fun experience, but... um. I just wish they were basically getting back down to I could I, use more options yeah. <laughs> for people that want, want a more authentic experience. Yeah. I just, I just really want a modern accurate representation of rally. And I just don't think it exists. You know, Richard Burns rally is probably like the most authentic in terms of like, uh, uh, just really trying to crack down on on not making it an accessible experience it's it's actually really inaccessible like most people i actually just got a request today to to, to do a tutorial on how to download it because people don't know where to even mm -hmm. get it 
you know, they don't even know how to get the game. You know, I mean, that's, yeah, that's the extent of it. Try it. Um, don't even, don't even try like the, the vanilla version, like the, you know, the actual version of the game. It, it's not the same game. You know, and, and when I tried it the first time, I'm like, what the fuck is everyone talking about? This is garbage. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, this, I, I, I took myself back like almost 20 years, right? Thinking back in my head, I'm like, okay, yeah, this is an amazing game for back then, but this is not the standard of, of rally racing now. But then I tried all the mods and like all the, the physics mods and all the, uh, um, yeah. The, the stages, like the, the amount of stages and the amount of content, the amount of cars you have at your fingertips to, to download, the amount of... Completely transformative. Yeah. Um, it, it, they even impl implemented ray tracing and, and like the lighting is amazing. Uh, nice. They have VR, you know, full VR cap uh, compatibility. Um, they That's have, pretty cool. Uh, you can adjust your FOV... Uh, you, you can change the pace notes to whatever you want them. You can change your co-driver voice to whoever you want. You can make your own co-driver voice. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Um, I don't play it enough because, because of the fact it's not very accessible. Like, it's really hard to um, make it do what you want it to do. But when it is doing it, it's like, yeah, it's, it's like, kind of like next level um, stuff. Well, um, <laughs> I guess that kind of plays into your, your statement. Are you saying I'm con contradicting myself? Myself? A little bit. <laughs> You're like, see, how does it that feel? It's more accessible, but you don't, <laughs> want it, you don't want to sacrifice the authenticity. Now, okay, so, so let, me, let, me, let me clarify. But I mean, that is that, that's just that engine, though. Where, you know, if somebody built it from the ground up with that intention, it could be completely different. Yeah, I, I want to clarify that statement I made. Accessibility in terms of... Um, pick up and play so the Forza uh, effect. <laughs> yeah because i mean uh i'm talking about accessibility in terms of like it's hard to navigate the menus you can't use your mouse yeah. you cannot use your mouse to click on anything it's 100 percent keyboard navigation like it's so frustrating to, to navigate the menus and they have all these workarounds to make things work like 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 100 different sub menus to to tweak this and tweak that because because they're having to rely on this old game engine you know the uh that just was never intended to do these things you know they're having to re use replacement code you know to uh yeah so yeah so if we started off with with this U ui wc10's ui which i hate i think it's horrible but it's miles better than uh the ui that richard burns rally forces you to have to use right like so if you have, have this ui even this level level graphics. I'm not happy with these graphics, right? Like we just talked about that. Like the graphics are not the best. Yeah. But it, but but, but I mean, the, it's a starting point. Yeah. And you and if you're saying. Yeah. And if you looked at uh, Richard Burns Rally's stages now, like they some of them almost look photo real. Like with the shaders that they're using. Um, you know, they have limitations have on. To, on I have to check this out soon. I think. Honestly, man, uh, I'll make a, t a tutorial uh, because there are some kind of intimidating things about it. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll make a t tutorial. But yeah, you, sh you should get into that game if you haven't tried it out. Like at least dip your toes in and see what it's about. Um, because the amount of like if you ever get tired of the stages in Dirt Rally 2 and WC10 or whatever, there's like <sighs> I think I have like what like hundreds downloaded right now, and there's more, yeah. you know. There's and you know people All are, are content. Um, a lot of it is, and, and some of it's like actual like modding companies. Rad. Yeah, but mm -hmm. and they'll 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 rip courses from other rally games and like update the graphics. Really? They'll 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 take uh, courses like like that you'll see in a set of Corsa and pop it in that game engine, you know. Um, yeah, it, it's amazing yeah. and. And uh, the sounds, they, they, they implemented the F mod, I think it's called sound engine. So the sounds okay. are not like all shitty like they used to be. Like, like the sounds. Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah, the sounds are actually, at least the engine sounds are, are better than WC10 by far, in my opinion. Yeah. The environmental sounds it's are still hard. shit. No, I know. That's not really, they're not the benchmark. <laughs> they're, they're, they're more like Thankfully. the. They're kind of like. They're not the benchmark. They're, they're kind of like the, the player on the bench, you know, in terms of if you want to put bench on there somewhere. But you got a, you got some cards in your spokes. <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, honestly, that that's 
if they they recorded someone's bicycle spokes in a, in a playing card, that would have been more convincing, in my opinion. Um, that's something. That, that's something. Uh, I want to ask you ask you about. Do you have time still, or you you need to go? Um, I do have to get going here soon. Okay. What's the question? Okay, we'll, we'll make this the last <clears throat> question, and it's kind of like a really okay. dumb question to to end it on. But um, oh, I'm plenty dumb. I can answer dumb questions. <laughs> um. <laughs> In your opinion, do you think it's more important for a simulator to simulate the sound from the driver's perspective, having a helmet on, right? Or a camera's mm -hmm. perspective from the, from the dri driver's point of view, like a GoPro or something like that? Like, what do you think is more important for the, the larger audience that plays you know, these games? Well, I guess it depends on the camera. <clears throat> so like if you're playing in a car and they don't have a helmet cam then i would expect it to be like you're inside the cockpit but you don't yeah. necessarily have a helmet on but if like you have acc where you can play from the helmet view then i would appreciate especially like if i'm having a vr experience mm -hmm. that it sounds like you're playing with the helmet on yeah you know each each view should have its sound profile yeah, you should have the, the the choice, and I don't think that'd be too hard to implement. Just like have like a sort of like a muffling feature, you know, like a, for all the sounds, you know. Yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, that, that's a good way to put it. And, and yeah, if you have a dedicated helmet cam, you should have that choice. I think you're right. Um, I don't think that that's really a uh, touched upon enough in 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 simulation racing games because people want sound is very important to games, especially when you're like racing because like. WRC 10 is a good example. They updated the, the uh, sound engine and it's just, <laughs> it still can't compete with even Dirt. No, Dirt, Dirt Rally 2.0 has an amazing sound engine. Um, it's a lot better. Environmental sounds, I don't, I don't think they do a good job at all. Um, but in terms of the engine no noises, what you hear yeah. most and the co-driver, you know, that the co-driver is amazing, but, uh, but yeah, like like I don't really think uh, many sim racing games really really uh, focus on that, and I think it's mainly because most people haven't driven in, in like a gutted out car like with a helmet on. They don't really know what it sounds like with a loud ass exhaust, and it's and brutal. and rocks fucking hitting the the underbelly of your car and the and the wheel wells, and uh, it's loud. Yeah. You know, it's loud even with a, even with a helmet on. Like it's it's you know it's it's kind of loud. It but, is. Um. Yeah, I mean. When, when when you see like people comparing it's 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 kind of like the whole um should i get better pedals even though i have a great wheel like yeah you should <laughs> it makes the experience yeah yeah um what was it saying yeah when people compare real life footage and, and I, I say footage with emphasis and then they compare it to a game that's that's not how a game should look, and that's not how a game should sound. A game, unless you're doing replays. If, if you want to replicate replays, yes, it should, it, it should look like you're looking through a camera, and it should look like you're hearing through a camera. But otherwise, I think it's inappropriate for, for sim racing games that are really serious about sim racing to, to focus on replicating sound that we hear in a camera, rather than like... Uh, you know, really, really, truly focusing on on the driver's experience, like the driver's true experience that we're trying to replicate. You know. Um, well, I mean, if we're going to go sim, then you know, we should try to make it as good as we can. I think. I mean, maybe it's a technical technological limitation with the recording equipment they have. I mean, I, I don't, don't think so because I mean, it, it's it's easy enough to. I mean, we have high quality stuff now. Yeah, I think it's just more or less. It it, it would throw a lot of people off because. The people that reference real life footage, that's the, the those are the sounds they hear. So they, they relate that to the okay, Being this is the, the real experience. Yeah, yeah, this is this is real life, so this is what it would sound like, right? And it's like I, I see that so often, like in, in audio clips in a set of Corsa in uh Richard Burns Rally. Yeah. Like they, they use sounds ripped from like YouTube or something like that. And it's like, yeah, that sounds like the real thing. You know, if you're outside of the car. Or yeah. if you if you're recording it on a camera, yeah, it sounds like the real thing, but it doesn't sound like it if you're actually there, maybe you know. And I think, um, you know, a lot of it, like like I said, has to do with people's perception of what what's real because of what what they're exposed to. Um, 
And also, like, you'd have to have a lot of resources to be able to actually hear in person all these cars rather than ha having reference footage um, to replicate. But I think if they just, like, like ha had, like, a basic filter, you know, that, that kind of just muffled things a little bit, I think uh, that would be... Gave it the cockpit feel. Yeah, I think that would be acceptable. Um, or I mean, because you, you can't get on any of these... Tra like, you, you're not legally allowed to race without certified helmets like so you're not gonna have yeah you're not gonna have people on the track that aren't wearing helmets it's just not you know you can't even do that at a local level you're not allowed to race with any kind of organization without a certified helmet so it's just like one of those things like where i just feel like it should be expected out of, out of a dedicated sim racing title to you know really have that be a focus on, on replicating inside of the helmet sounds um, like all your burps and stuff and, and smells yeah like like a, a closed face helmet <clears throat> yeah had a burrito right beforehand oh god we're in for a long drive yeah <laughs> well, okay man I, i'm sorry to kind of like end like, that on like a I statement what you're saying. yeah yeah <laughs> i like, i just think as long as like the kit i mean i mean we don't have it right now anyway but if we're going to have a camera in a specific place then try to replicate the audio from that space. That yeah, at the nice. very least. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, well, um, I, know, I know you got to get going, and... Uh, yeah, I, I do... <laughs> I, Just escorting it. I, 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 I do really appreciate um, you taking the time to, obviously, to do this interview and... In, uh, um, obviously, just and, and our time playing together, I really appreciate that too, and and I appreciate you yeah, as a person. Get some more racing in. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate you as a person, yeah. and, and uh, I like I like. Uh, hey, I appreciate you and your perspective yeah. as well, man. We don't yeah. we don't gel on everything, but I feel like we have a good exchange. Yeah, but we both know? got good hairstyles, you know. But <laughs> maybe you do. <laughs> yeah. Are you kind of more of a hairspray hairspray guy? I don't use any products. I don't either. Like, not even mousse, and not not, not even uh, that. What's that uh, greaser stuff they used to use? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> ball, ball ball made is that what it's called? Uh, I was never into it. It was like ball it was made. like a yeah. I think it was ball made. It was some kind of like lard or something like that. They just put like straight up fat mm -hmm. in their hair. It was just like fucking. <laughs> why would you do that? I mean, um, I don't know. I guess it's the same same kind of thing about olive oil. Like you know. I'm gonna start taking olive oil showers, by the way. Um, okay, if that makes you happy. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get all fucking greased up. No, you do you. <laughs> but my my uncle actually uh, takes olive oil oil showers, and he has since he was a kid, and he has the best skin I've ever fucking seen. So like, and he's like fifty something, maybe he's sixty something, but he, he's got great skin. He's probably got better skin than me. But um, yeah, to end this interview out, look up <laughs> <laughs> look up uh, olive oil showering, and uh, you know. This has gone to a place. <laughs> really wet place. Oily. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, might say creamy. Cre yeah. Yeah. Keep it creamy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, ha have a good day. And uh, yeah, let, let's, let's definitely race soon. Um, I, I mean, you got to race. That was cool. I enjoyed watching yeah. you race. Next it was kind of fun. You, you interview me. Uh, you interview me. Sure. I'm down with that. You want to do an interview of me on your channel? Maybe. I'll have to come up with some questions, but yeah. Yeah, okay. You got the time. Yeah, let's do that. I'm interested to hear what you'd ask me. <laughs> is, that self potatoes. is that self-centered for me to wonder about that? I mean, is there a person who isn't in if you some put, regard? If you put the mouse over like the little avatar racer guys, like where our names are, it looks like a little dunce cap. What? The the mouse cursor, like how it kind of looks like a, like a little triangle, like you could put over the little mm -hmm. driver's helmets, and it looks like a little dunce cap. Or like a KKK <laughs> member or something like that, or like a wizard. Um, think birthday party hat or a birthday party <laughs> hat, yeah, yeah. Or like the the Tin Man, like on Wizard of Oz. Um, or a clown. So he was pretty oily. Yeah.
Yeah, he he probably takes oil baths, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's, it's important to <laughs> it's important it's important to stay well lubricated. But uh, yeah, never skip your oil sessions. Yeah, and and they should be plenty for for men's health and women's health too. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna start health. i'm gonna start calling my oil sessions i like that <laughs> Leave it <an> oil slick. <laughs> yeah yeah and things get more slippery in the end you know like you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. <laughs> i don't get it <laughs> you're like mm-hmm. explain it to yeah. me <laughs> in detail yeah <clears throat> graphic um, detail yeah um well yeah man uh, ha- have a good night and uh <laughs> let me get going yeah and and i appreciate you taking the time though yeah thanks uh for interviewing a pleb like me i guess you ain't no pleb i ain't no pro <laughs> if people would see some of the times you said in, in dirt rally too like i think you know so yeah i'll, I'll include all the links in the bottom or the, in the bottom you know who, who knows where well, it i appreciate is. it yeah yeah and i'll thanks include the time to interview me and getting my odd perspective on things <clears throat> yeah and i'll throw hardly tech in the in the description too uh because i really think uh um you know it's an underappreciated channel obviously both your channels are but like the hardly tech channel i think you're really doing good for the community in that one and uh um well i hope so yeah it, like, like what you said that you're kind of focusing on on the questions that aren't answered you know and, and i don't think enough people do that they, they try to focus on what's the question that's most asked you know got some um, more stuff in the works yeah i'm, I'm excited to see it on some cpu stuff soon so yeah <clears throat> if anybody's watching keep your eyes open There's yeah we're on the way and 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 as much as we probably would not like to admit it sim racing is very deeply connected to uh you know, gaming components, PC components, like you can't do what we do without that stuff. So I think it is important to arm yourself with the knowledge of, of what potentially would be best for, for your, you know, your setup or your goals, you know? I mean, hey, <clears throat> man, I got to drink more water. One sec. No. Ah, um, maybe I'll do a segment. You, can't, you came back as a, as a pirate. That was kind of... Yar! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Um, buy me components <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe i'll do a segment before too long on like what's the minimum level uh what's like the minimum gpu and cpu needed for a certain sim game yeah uh, how about that for a suggestion if you if you'd be willing to do it um make a, a video dedicated to your opinion like, a, like an old 1050 ti yeah i've been like, wondering can this thing still game <laughs> Yeah, maybe maybe put together a video of of your recommendations for like what we were talking about, like for for VR use and for for sim racing, like bottom like bottom line stuff, you know, like because people want to get into this, but they don't they don't know where to start, they don't know what components to get, you know. Um, yeah. Maybe make a video like that and, and kind of merge your two channels together, and you know, uh, you got like an old GPU and an old CPU. Yeah, that'd be. It. Maybe I can see what we can do. Yeah, I, I'd be really interested to, to to hear your thoughts on that. All right. Well, <clears throat> if anybody else has suggestions for the channel, let me know. Yeah, let read comments. Let him know in these comments, and let him know in future comments when he interviews me on his channel. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not locking you into this. I'm not. I'm just. Uh, I won't include that. Maybe. Maybe I will. <laughs> of peer pressure you into let me, interviewing let me just me. strong arm you into this yeah wait no it, yeah well <laughs> yeah um okay i'm not being serious Anyways. but yeah i would enjoy that but uh yeah ha- have a good night man yeah. and and uh you too and uh yeah I'll, I'll get this video out as soon as i can all right i'll uh think up some questions for you and then you can drive yeah pace noteless yeah man <laughs> it's tougher than you think when you're trying to ask questions answer questions and, and them. answer them yeah yeah and okay. answer them because <laughs> you you asked me some questions too whilst driving whilst indeed yeah okay give man some I, deeper ones yeah give, give me yeah. some real deep ones <laughs> give it some to me like, deep some like yeah. 14 inch questions <laughs> um maybe some 14 minute questions Ooh, you think you can go that long? 
Mmm. Hey, you're good with these uh, <laughs> sexual comebacks here. Getting uh, getting creamy in here. Yeah. About to uh, rain up in this bitch. <laughs> you're really putting some uh, steam under my sail? What's the saying? Wind under my... Uh, that, uh, that doesn't relate to sexual things at all. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> have, have a good night, man. <laughs> later, man. <laughs> all right. See you later. <laughs> Bye. I have a feeling you're still there. You're going to do that thing. Okay, I'm about what to push. <laughs> I was just about to push stop recording. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm not yeah. here. Okay. Later. Okay, see. Okay, now, now that I know he's definitely off, maybe, maybe definitely off. It's hard, hard to tell. Um, that was a lot of fun. It's hard to ask 100% serious questions when two left is on the other end of the, <laughs> the interview or the simter view. And uh, so I hope you all found this entertaining. I hope you found it. Um, I hope you found it informational. Is that a word? Informational. Why does that not register in my brain? In informational? I hope you found good information in this video. All the links will be in the description below or wherever it is in the future when you watch this because maybe, maybe the future of YouTube is the description above the video. Because, you know, the, the weight of the content might start holding down, you know, it, it, it might just like sink to the bottom. And then all the extreme, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm really tired. I didn't sleep well last night. Have a good day. Thank you for watching. And I hope to see you in a future Simter view. Bye.